Waymaker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, miracle worker. That's who our God is. Thank you, Children's Choir, for singing that. And thanks to Becca, Sam, uh, Jessica, and uh, Denise, and other staff members and volunteers who work with our children's ministry. The psalmist wrote, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Indeed, this is the day to rejoice. This is the day to honor mothers. Happy Mother's Day. We honor mothers that are present here and those moms that are joining us online. Moms, you love children. You nurture them. You encourage them. And there are times when it can become stressful, at the same time fulfilling. The role of motherhood is both special and complex. And moms, you are good at multitasking. You perform multiple roles. And you persevere in your faith. So moms are to be applauded. I have great memories of my mother. My mother loved me unconditionally. She was my safe place. She was always there to encourage me and comfort me. And I do miss her. Moms, you have a wonderful privilege to love your children unconditionally, to influence them, to mold them, to comfort and support them. And moms, you are doing a great job. Thank you for doing a great job building up your children. May the Lord bless you. Happy Mother's Day. Moms are good at many things, and one of those things is dancing. So the sermon title for this morning is Dance Where Your Feet Are. Yes, Dance Where Your Feet Are. Our scripture reading is from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 11. The book of Acts in the New Testament was written by Luke, who also wrote the Gospel of Luke. In the Gospel of Luke, the last chapter, chapter 24, Luke describes various instances about Jesus' resurrection. He continues with the same theme throughout the book of Acts. Also, in the book of Acts, the author describes for us the acts or the doings, actions of the apostles. With that, let us turn to the scriptures. Our scripture today comes from the book of Acts, the first chapter, verses 6 through 11. The reading may be found on page 905, and the Bibles are received as you entered, and we invite you to join along. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. About uh, two months ago, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I was up for about one hour before I fell asleep again. During that night, there were heavy thunderstorms in the Algonquin area. Heavy pouring of rains, dark clouds, strong gusty winds, lightning. 
Well, after about an hour, I did fall asleep, and then a few hours later, I woke up, got ready, and I looked outside, and it was quiet. What a difference. The noise of the loud thunderstorms was replaced by the quiet, gentle breeze of the morning. It was morning time. I got ready and did my devotion. And during my devotion time, I reflected on Psalm 30. In verse 5, the psalmist write, Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. <laughs> Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. In the same psalm later on in verse 11, the psalmist writes, Oh Lord, you have turned my grieving, my wailing, into joyful dancing. <laughs> You've turned my grieving into joyful dancing. There was a transition, almost a transformation. Psalmist moved from being in a state of lament to being in a state of praise. Psalmist had encountered some difficult circumstances. And finally, those came to an end. And then he was able to express and acknowledge that this was God's doing. Because of that, he was filled with joy and was able to dance, metaphorically speaking. The night time, the term night in this context, is about the dark time. Night denotes, it's a metaphor of darkness. The dark times, the difficult, challenging circumstances, crisis, could be a health issue, relational matter, uh, financial challenge, um, job stress. And those times could be the times of weeping, the times of heartaches. That's the night time. But then comes the morning. There's something beautiful about the morning. With morning comes the light. There is sunrise. Light drives away darkness. Light brings hope. Morning brings hope. Hope nullifies the effects of discouragement and despair. There is something beautiful about the morning time. Eleanor Forgen wrote a hymn several years ago, which was then made popular by Cat Stevens. It includes these lyrics. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning. Praise with elation, praise every morning. God's recreation of the new day. That's what morning is. God's recreation of the new day. A time of hope, a time of fresh energy, and a time to sing praises to God. It was a Sunday afternoon. Two men were traveling from one town to another town, which was seven miles away. And they were traveling by feet. They were walking. We only know the name of one of these two guys. The author, Luke, reveals to us in Luke chapter 24, verse 18, that one person's name was Cleopas. So it is Cleopas and his friend who are taking this journey. On this day, they are filled with sorrow. They are sad. They had encountered a major setback in the last two days. They are discouraged. They are filled with doubts despair. And after a few minutes, as they are walking along, something unusual happens. Someone comes along and starts to walk with them and poses a question to them, what type of conversations are you two having? Cleopas responds to him, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know what is going on? All the things that have happened. This visitor then turns to Cleopas and says, what things? Cleopas then responds, thinks about Jesus of Nazareth. We had so much hope in him about his teaching and healing. And then our priests and rulers condemned him to death, crucified him. And then this morning, 
Some woman from our group came and reported that the tomb is empty and he is risen. We're just having a hard time. We are perplexed. We, we don't know what's going on. So this visitor, in a very calm manner, starts to explain to them the scriptures and the prophecies. And there was something compelling about this visitor that these two men, Cleopas and his friend, were drawn to, drawn to his explanation, to his teaching. So they continue this walk. After about two hours, they reach a fork in the road, literally. Cleopas and his friend were about to take a turn this way, and it seemed like this visitor was, was about to take the other road. At that point, Cleopas and his friend said to this visitor, why don't you come and join us? Come and stay with us. Have dinner with us. And this visitor accepts the invitation. And now they are seated around a dinner table, and this visitor takes the bread, prays, blesses it, breaks it, and passes it around. In those moments, Cleopas and his friends' eyes were open. That was Jesus sitting in front of them. He was with them all along, walking with them. It was a light bulb moment. Now, I want to share with you my observations about this story and some of the inferences that we can draw from it. Number one, what I call the presence presence. You see, Cleopas and his friend were having a hard time. Jesus was present with them all along. He was walking with them. Jesus is present with you, each one of you. He's walking with you during a difficult journey. Second observation, invitation. Cleopas and his friend deserve credit for extending the invitation to this visitor. And he accepted it. The inference then is, when we extend the invitation to Jesus, when we express our desire to draw closer to him, he accepts our invitation and draws us closer to him. He is just one prayer away. Third observation, faith-based practices what I call faith-based practices. Look, Cleopas and his friend recognized Jesus when they participated in this experience, a shared experience, something they had uh, practiced in the past with Jesus about breaking of the bread. It is in those moments that their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus. Similarly, when we engage in faith-based practices regularly, our level of awareness increases to recognize him, to sense his presence. Faith-based practices, such as attending church service on Sunday, as you are doing. I commend you for that. Faith-based practices, such as being part of a faith community. Faith-based practices, such as being part of a Bible study, a small group, uh, a serving group. Those are good for the soul. They are healthy habits. They increase our awareness of his presence. Then we are able to recognize and process the signal. We are within his zone. Last observation, fourth. When Cleopas and his friend began their journey, they were in the night time, in the dark time. They were discouraged. They were in despair. But then the night came to an end. There was morning time when they had an encounter with a risen Savior. On a given day, we experience a variety of feelings, some very pleasant feelings and some very unpleasant feelings. Psychologists and social scientists have been studying human emotions for many, many years. We are equipped with a range of emotions. And those emotions actually could be put into two categories, two buckets, positive emotions and negative emotions. 
positive emotions are those that are associated with happiness, love, joy, humor, pride. By the way, dance is an expression of joy, of happiness. It involves physical movement, movements of the body to express joy. Negative emotions are those that are associated with fear, guilt, shame, anger, worry, anxiety. Those are negative emotions. They drain our energy. In the recent years, a new type of emotion has been identified. Dacher Keltner is a professor of psychology at the University of California in Berkeley. And he has been conducting extensive research on this new type of emotion. And he has published several articles and books on this matter. The new type of emotion is awe, oh, that's A-W-E. And Dr. Keltner describes this emotion is different from other emotions because awe is outward focused, whereas all other emotions are inward focused. There is a normal tendency, and perhaps even a default mode, where we are only concerned about the self, the self-interest. But when we are filled with awe, we are not concerned about self. You see, sometimes the self, the self can become overactivated. Look at it this way. When we approach a decision, when we are approaching a decision-making process, we may look at various criteria, various options. And one consideration, perhaps even a major consideration, or the only consideration might be, what is in it for me? How do I get ahead? How do I benefit from this? It's about me, me, and me. Ah, helps us to come out of ourselves. John the Baptist had an encounter with Jesus. And in those moments he said, he, that is Jesus, must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. John figured out how to deal with self. What John is saying is, he must increase and I must decrease. It's more about him and less about me. Awe helps us to come out of ourselves. So then, how do we fill ourselves with moments of awe and wonder? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> First consideration. Be aware, notice the creation, the beauty of the nature. There's so much are all around us. Sunset, sunrise, mountains, oceans, stars, moon. There's just so much beauty all around us. Yesterday, I noticed uh, on Facebook, uh, in my Facebook feed, uh, there were some posts. Uh, people ha had uh, posted uh, pictures of the northern lights, also known as aurora. These pictures were beautiful. It was about a solar activity that makes the sun, uh, sorry, the sky glow in different colors, pink, green, purple. It's a beautiful thing to behold. Last month, many of us watched the eclipse, and you may remember, it may be fresh in your memory. On that day, several people observed that their own problems look so small in consideration of the vast universe. I was watching news. And this reporter was interviewing people, asking them about their experience watching the eclipse. And uh, some of the people used the words like, it was beautiful. It was awesome. It was spectacular. It was breathtaking. Those were the expressions. But then I really liked the next one. And uh, listen to this part. So the reporter asked the couple, how, they, how did they feel? What did they think about the eclipse? And this couple responded saying, 
It was like watching moon and sun dancing. It was a celestial dance. How's that? Dance. All around us, there is so much beauty in the creation. And in those moments when we become aware of it, when we take time to notice, the right response is to acknowledge the creator, the master designer, the architect who has designed this universe. And that's the idea that the psalmist had. In Psalm chapter 19, verse 11, the psalmist says, O oh Lord, you are the creator. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim, display his craftsmanship. The skies display his craftsmanship. It's his work, the work of his hands. In such moments, the right response ought to be, O oh God, how great thou art. And that's the idea Stuart Hine had when he wrote the hymn with these lyrics. O oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. So we can be filled with awe when we take notice of the beautiful creation around us. We can also be filled with awe when listening to music. Music can be uplifting, can draw us closer, as we just experienced a few minutes ago with our worship team singing. Visual arts can also help us to come out of ourselves to be filled with awe, looking at some paintings and photographs and trying to imagine what the artist had in mind when they painted that. That can help us to come out of ourselves. And I'll give you one more thing to consider so as to be filled with awe. The love of God. The love of God. Every day you and I, we get so many benefits because of his love. All the provisions, everything that we have is from him. Every breath that I take is from him. In this moment, my lungs are functioning well. I'm able to breathe. Without breath, there is no life. Every breath is from him. Oh, the love of God. George Beverly Shea wrote a hymn with the title, The Wonder of It All. In that hymn, George Beverly Shea writes, there is the wonder of sunset. There is the wonder of sunrise. There is the wonder of springtime. There is the wonder of harvest. There is the wonder of moon, stars. But the wonder of the wonders that thrills my soul is the wonder that God loves me. <laughs> oh, the wonder. Oh, the wonder of it all just to think that God loves me. Oh, oh, the wonder. Oh, the wonder of it all just to think that God loves you, each one of you. Well, then, how do we describe what this love of God is? What types of phrases or expressions might we use to adequately, accurately describe what this love of God is? Are there some metrics, some measurements we can use to measure the magnitude, the extent of his love? Would you like to know answers to these questions? Frederick Lehman made an attempt to find answers to these questions. And this is what he came up with. Imagine, imagine the sky was a paper and all the people in the entire world had a pen to write and all the oceans in the entire world were filled with ink 
And if all the people in the entire world start to write on this paper, this vast paper, the sky, using the ink from the oceans to describe what the love of God is, and they keep writing, keep describing it, keep doing it, and then comes a point, all the oceans are drained. There's no more ink left. And then the author concludes, we haven't done a good job describing what the love of God is. We'll come short. Do you get that? Fill all the oceans of the world with ink. Let all people in the world write with their pens on this vast paper sky. Keep writing, keep describing what you think of the love of God is. Drain all the oceans and you still haven't done a good job describing what the love of God is. Oh, how measureless it is. Oh, how he loves you and me. Ladies and gentlemen, weeping will last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. Yes, those dark times, those difficult circumstances will come to an end, and there will be a bright morning, and the light will come, it will drive away the darkness, and we'll be filled with joy. But. Until that time, until the time when the morning arrives, while we are still in the middle of a dark night, metaphorically speaking, while we are still facing these difficult situations, we are in the dark night. Can we dance? Can we dance where our feet are? The answer is, of course, yes. Well, then how? By taking some time to be filled with awe, looking at the nature, the creation, recognizing the work of a great architect. By taking inventory of your blessings, count your blessings, name them one by one. Look, when facing a difficult situation, oftentimes we are so preoccupied with that one issue, it captures our thoughts. It occupies entire bandwidth of the brain. That's the only thought, which is the dominant thought in our brain throughout the day and in the nighttime, in the middle of the night, literally here. In those moments, when we take into consideration the blessings of God, look, one part, one area in our life is not working. There's one part that is malfunctioning, but there are 99 other parts that are functioning well. Count your blessings. And then consider the love of God. How measureless, how vast. We can dance where our feet are because we are Easter people. We can dance where our feet are because we worship the risen Savior. We can dance where our feet are because we stand in the awe of this great God. Mark Altrog wrote a song with these lyrics. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous, too wonderful for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? You are. Beautiful beyond description. Majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God to whom all praise is due. I stand in awe of you. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you for your goodness, for your loving kindness. Thank you for your love, so measureless. And Lord God, 
help us to be filled with awe, to draw closer to you. That is our desire. And we pray this in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.